Have you heard? Have you heard the newest and best Bahamian resource for test preparation for BJCs and BGCSEs? Check us out on Facebook or at anansibahamas.com. Again, check us out on Facebook or at www.anansibahamas.com. Where Mr. Ferguson is the CEO, there are a lot of resources, especially for Bahamian students. Anansi Learning Technologies. Check us out. Good evening, students. It is so good to have you in this supplemental review session for the exam. As noted in the syllabus, there will be three exams this semester and a final exam. Um, the lowest exam score will be dropped before calculating the total exam score for a total of 600 points. Any time constraint or conflict that's university approved can serve as a basis for rescheduling an exam. Any missed exam is an absence, if not excused, will result in an automatic zero for the exam. However, this score can serve as the dropped score. So this is what I'm referring to when I say you can drop your lowest grade. Um, the exam will be released on Friday, September 16th, 2022, instead of Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. You have 24 hours to take it. The deadline is final. No exceptions will be made except for reasons approved by the university. The link to respond to the test assignment will close after 24 hours, and the Moodle link will close after 24 hours to upload the hard copy. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, hopefully you are able to uh, get all of the tasks done in order to prepare for this exam. Um, wishing you all the best. So let's begin the review. We will review for exam one. Let me change the view. Full screen. There we go. So this is I uh, a uh, this is a version of the review. We will review for exam one on Wednesday. Homework 3 will be due on Sunday. So these are some quick facts you want to just go through. Um, so as I said earlier, homework 3, which will be uh, given on Saturday, September 10th, will be given Saturday, September 10th, and will be due on Sunday. But let's just review some quick facts. One, solids have a definite shape and are not appreciably compressible. So you want to know these facts. These are going to be important for you to know. It's important for you to review the videos on YouTube as well as the notes from the class, the PowerPoint, and the handouts, the packets. Especially this review video. Sodium, Na, is the chemical symbol for elemental sodium. Three, if mud is uniform throughout, it cannot be, uh, cannot be separated into other substances by physical processes, but can be decomposed into other substances by chemical processes. It is called a compound. Four, symbol for the element, potassium is K. Also remember, there will be a quiz given on Monday and on Wednesday. Five, the symbol for the element magnesium is Mg. Six, the initial or tentative explanation for some scientific phenomenon or occurrence is called an hypothesis. 7. A concise verbal statement or mathematical equation that summarizes a broad variety of observations and experiences is called a law. 8. A separation process that depends on differing abilities of substances to form gases is called distillation. Let's proceed the SI unit for mass is kilogram 10 uh, my apologies if this is not that clear 10 or uh, one degree of temperature the one degree of temperature that's smallest on on the front is the finite temperature scale um, I actually should read a uh, one degree of temperature is smallest on the finite temperature scale 11. A common English set of units for expressing velocity is miles per hour. 
That's how unit velocity is meter per second. Momentum is defined as a product of mass and velocity. That's how unit momentum is kilogram meter per second. Also, some review tips. Review homeworks one and two. Review the quizzes I will give you, and review the lecture videos and problem-solving sessions, and you should be fine and set the exam. Remember, the exam is 50 questions, 55 questions, 50 multiple choice, and five short answers. Um, number 14, the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. Number 15, the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius is 298 in Kelvins. 16, the freezing point of water at 1 atm pressure is 0 degrees. 17, the temperature of 400K is the same as 261 degrees Fahrenheit. 18, the temperature of 290K is the same as 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, the number 1.00430 has six significant figures. Additionally, in the following list, only light is an example of light is not in the following list, only light is not an example of model. Um, 54, the law of composition applies to compounds. And it says that the composition of a compound is always the same. Moving forward, the quantum mechanical model of the atom is important because it explains how electrons exist in atoms and how those electrons determine the chemical and physical properties of elements. Light is a transverse wave and is a form of re EM radiation, electromagnetic radiation. Light travels at 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. 7.3 The wavelength of the wave is the distance in space between adjacent crests and is measured in units of distance. E equals HC over lambda, where E equals H nu and nu is C over lambda. 7.5a The frequency of the light is related to the color new or v, however you want to say it, is new, is directly proportional to the energy of the disturbance and which is related to the color of the light. Um, for one of your homework assignments, there was a question that said to explain each wavelength. You want to know the answers to that very well. For gamma raise the frequency, the wavelength, and also you want to know it for x-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, infrared rays, microwaves, and radio waves. 7.3, the wavelength of the wave is the distance in space between adjacent crests and is measured in units of distance as I said earlier. The amplitude of the wave is the vertical height of a crest. The more closely spaced the waves, the shorter the wavelength, the more energy there is, the amplitude the more energy there is. The amplitude of the electric and magnetic fields in light determine the intensity or brightness of the light. The higher the amplitude is, the more energy the wave has. So I just want to give you a quick guide. There will be five types of short answer questions, short answer calculations that I will release to you or give you on the exam. One type of short answer questions so you'll have 50 multiple choice and they'll primarily be facts and a few calculations the calculation questions for the short answer will be in five categories one problem will be on em radiation and it'll be a dimensional analysis problem the other problem will be on the wave nature of matter using the Broglie's equation the other question will be on atomic spectroscopy the other question will be on quantum numbers and then you will have to know how to draw a young double split diagram um, so, for example, if you were given a problem where you were given the distance to the sun as 1.496 times 10 to the 8 kilometers, and you're required to find the time for light to travel from the sun to the earth, you'll think through and you'll come up with a conceptual plan. The conceptual plan will be you convert the distance in kilometers, distance in meters to time, and then the solution would be uh, the distance converted to meters, then multiplied by the reciprocal of the speed of light to give you the time that will be 499 seconds so the way of nature of my sample problem will involve say you were given a mass of 9.109 times 10 to 31 kilograms 
the Hamda is 0.2 nanometers. Find the frequency conceptual plan would be you take the mass and the wavelength, convert to frequency using u is equal to Planck's constant h over mass times wavelength. The solution is going to be 6.626. I'm sent to minus 34 kilograms meter squared per second squared over 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms times 0 0.2 nanometers times 1 meter over 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers. That is going to give you 3.6 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. The units are correct. The magnitude is large. That is what would be expected from the particle being calculated here. A particle speed being calculated here, and that particle is the electron. Okay, my apologies for if some of these pictures are blurry. So, note on the exam you will be given a spectrum. So, this is an example of the atomic spectroscopy problem. For the problem, you'll be required to solve the energy, and you'll be required to know, uh, find the lambda, the wavelength, and you'll also be required to determine which region of the spectrum it is in. So say for example, you were given a problem that said you started in the second quantized state or second orbital and you the reaction relaxed to the first orbital. And how you would calculate that, you would use Rigbert's equation in which you input the final and initial quantized states, then you get the energy values, and then you use the energy values Using E equals AT over lambda, you transpose it so that lambda is the subject, and then you get the wavelength, and you find that that's typically in the UV or ultraviolet range. So for quantum numbers, you want to know your principal quantum number N. You want to know your angular quantum number L. You want to know the magnetic quantum number M sub L. And you want to know the spin quantum number M sub S. You want to know the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. You want to know Pauli's exclusion principle. You want to know a particle duality ideas. And you want to know the photoelectric effect. Note, writing electron configurations will be assessed in exam 2, not exam 1. Also, you want to know how to draw Young's double spit experiment. So that's kind of the review. Uh, we will discuss more review. We'll do more review on Wednesday. On Monday will be regular lecture. Note, you'll have two quizzes. You'll have a quiz on Monday and a quiz on Wednesday. All of this is just preparation for the exam so that you are well versed in the calculations and you have a good understanding as to how to proceed with the exam. The quiz will be released on Monday morning and quiz, uh, quiz 2 will be released Monday morning. Quiz 3 will be released Wednesday morning. I hope you're doing well and hope you do well on the exam. Thank you, Mr. Bourne, for joining me today. Welcome to the new chemist. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Odyssey, and a variety of other platforms. Here on The New Chemist, we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as careers, community research, and Nobel Prize laureate lectures in chemistry, analyzing their speeches. We're happy you're tuning in. My guest today is a former teacher of mine from the great Bishop Michael Eldon High School, Mr. Bourne. Thank you for joining me today. It is so good to hear from you. Just briefly, I'll inform my audience about you. So Mr. Bond is a legend and a great teacher in his own right. He grew up in Guyana, went to an excellent university, passed several examinations. Also, he was an avid cricketer. Um, he pursued his degrees, got distinction. He's been accomplished in his own right, a Google educator certified level one. He's married, has children, and he's also an ordained minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he currently serves and worships at Word of Life. Ministries International. Once again, it is good to have Mr. Bourne on the podcast today. <laughs> awesome, so exciting. Awesome, awesome. Good to be here, David. Good to yeah. be here. <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. Bourne, what have been your long-standing interests in the fields of science? Um, I tell you what, I, I really, really, um, I really like organic chemistry. 
that's one of my areas that I've been really, really be interested in. Um, and when I teach, that's always been one of my more passionate areas. I'm also very passionate about food and analytical chemistry okay. and STEM education. So those are just a few of the areas that I'm really, really interested in and, um, you know, really, um, really trying as much as I can to, to make an impact in those areas, even okay. at high school level. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. So I have a quick question on that same, on that same trend. What practical thing that you, have you done of uh, recent, even in the pandemic, that allowed you to teach those concepts effectively, like organic chemistry concepts or anal basic analytical chemistry concepts? What have you done that has worked yes. so well? Well, I tell you what, it, it's uh, as you talked about the pandemic. The pandemic is really that was one of the things that really threw a curveball in education. And um, we had to look for resources. Um, and some of the ones that we would have used are some of the simulations that help students to really understand. I think FET is one of the ones that I, I mm -hmm. used quite mm -hmm. extensively. Um, I also, you know, try to get a, a, a lot of digital content. Um, CK12 is a um, program that I really, I, I fell in love with. And uh, my students were really, really interested to, you know, be absorbed in that kind of material because what it did it not only give them you know the the, the the simple read this or watch this video but they also had um, animations and they had um, simulations and those kinds of things that really drove some of these concepts home a whole lot better than um, you know we could have done you know teaching it in a more conventional way Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, simulations are good. Even in graduate school, we used a few simulations like Wabino, in which we can look at ligand docking, and mm -hmm. also Spartan for certain classes. So there are yes. a lot of stations that are available when it comes yes. to teaching chemistry content. Even Chemistry Libre Text yes. has a good resource as well. Definitely. So, how do you maintain view of the bigger picture in your career and in your life in general? How do you keep perspective as, uh, a, as a person? Okay, I... I, I... One of the things that I try to do is, is I strive to constantly improve myself. Okay. I, I, I all, you know, you have to, you cannot become, you, in, in education, you cannot allow yourself to become stagnant. Because before you know it, you'll become that, 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 you know, 800 pound gorilla in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so constantly I've been trying to improve myself in terms of, um, you know, exposing myself to the, the, whatever it is that might be trending or whatever it is that might be, you know, the breaking um, things in education or whatever. Um, the other thing that I, I, I don't compromise my beliefs okay. or my ethics, yeah. irrespective of the situations that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that you have to be you, you have to be true to yourself. I agree. And that's one of the part, one of the areas in which I really, you know, I, I, I strive to, 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 to continue to be who I am you know, and don't lose sight of the, the you know, the, the big picture. Yes, we're in education. Yes, we're making a difference. Yes, these are some of the things that are happening. But then you are still responsible to be the better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Every day, you know, and so that's what I try to do because with me being a better version of myself, when I come to my students, I could I could demand a better version of them. Mm -hmm. You understand? I agree. And we could say to themselves, you know what? He's not shortchanging me because he is also trying to the thing that he's asking me to do, he's not. He's trying to do it for himself. You know? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You know? So, um, how have you been adaptive and creative in the field of science? What, what would you say has complemented you being effective so long as a teacher in education? Um, what would you say has allowed you to be creative in how you instruct or adapt to the different conditions? Um, what What would you say has been a complementary factor? How have you done mm -hmm. it? No problem. Um, you know. For, for quite a long time or quite a significant number of years, you know, you've been accustomed to doing things a particular way or, you know, getting things done and getting, you know, pretty good results. But I think COVID-19, as I said before, was a curveball. It really threw a spoke in the wheel of educators and it really caused us to take a hard introspective look at the, the programs and the learning and the teaching and learning materials that we were producing and we were, you know, making available to our students. And so I was forced, when you see, when COVID hit and everything shut down and we had to go virtually, I was forced, as so many other educators were, to, 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 
really search for 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 other ways of reaching the students mm -hmm. because you know it it wasn't it, it wasn't just easy to it wasn't just okay to just talk and get their attention you had to grasp their attention and so um google certification was one of the things that i really turned to and it, i think it really helped my creativity okay um yes i i used the um almost the whole suite okay so that's good things you know i used um the google forms for 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 multiple choice um testing um we use the google slides um for for presented material you mm -hmm. know we, we got um collected material um, information and put it in google sheets all of those so you know it really gave me an opportunity to um you know expand your repertoire expand my re repertoire yes um i also talked about ck12 um very good digital content and okay. uh, one of the things that they allowed us to, that, that they allowed me to do after i was certified with them is they allowed me to um what is the word i'm looking for they allowed me to be able they have a textbook uh huh it's a digital textbook but to contribute to the digital textbook yeah they allowed me to make um the relevant changes that i might so that it might be more relevant to my students okay and so okay. that was that was awesome in itself because the students are, they they love the content okay so um but some of the things were not necessarily um you know tailored for contextually the, specific yes yes so i had to use my um creat creativity to you know try and weave in those things i agree and add those things in and um you know it, it it's it's not a finished product but of course it's something that is an ongoing project for me okay that's good so mr bond can somebody can you explain what is ck12 for those who may not know or who may yeah. want to google it or yeah. find out about it what's ck12 no problem ck12 is um it's it's an educational platform uh -huh. seamlessly integrates with um your learning platforms such as google um classroom or you know um whatever lms that you might have uh -huh. we, we of course use google classroom and what it does it presents the material in in a way that um you know i i've never really seen it before okay. to next time. because what it does it offers for every topic that you do there's a little bit of reading there's mm -hmm. a video to watch there are mm -hmm. always some questions that they would ask you to see how well you were um you were grasping the material mm -hmm. uh, there are simulations there are animations wow the part that i love is what is called adaptive learning mm -hmm. so when it's time for the students to practice mm -hmm. what they would do is they would start asking questions there are three different um, difficulty levels Mm -hmm. There's easy the medium and the hard. Uh -huh. So what they do is when they ask students a question and if they see that they're struggling for say on the medium questions, mm -hmm. then what they do is they 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 from the reservoir of questions that they have, they kind of tailor it back for that particular student. Mm -hmm. So that student then is able to get more confidence, build up their confidence on maybe easier questions before they tackle the more difficult ones. Wow. And, and so yes that, this is good that, sounds that like a good resource good. mr boy yeah man, a really Very good, good resource. resource and so for anybody who's looking up looking for that you can just go to ck12.org mm -hmm. sign up as a teacher and um they are always running um i think in the summer especially they run the certification programs mm -hmm. and of course they could then go you know jump jump for head first after that that's yeah that's good you know, yeah to make sure the students get the resources they need that's right that's right so how have you sort of found the right environment for you to thrive scientifically and intellectually so what <laughs> led you to choose university of guyana what led you to choose bishop michael Eldon school to teach at um why yeah. did you choose those institutions well i tell you what um when i in, in guyana it i wouldn't say it was much of a choice Okay. Guyana, the University of Guyana is the is the premier um, um, tertiary educational facility. Okay. And, um, so when I when I came out from high school, I worked pretty briefly in the banks because I didn't have the money to go to school. I, okay. I didn't have money to to go, you know, to pay for tertiary education. Yeah. And it wasn't until after I got a scholarship that I was able to go there. So the scholarship, so it kind of like um, pushed me in that area. 
but I always believe that God works things out the, in, 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 in ways that you can't understand. I agree. So that when you think that you should have gone here or gone there, he knows exactly what it is that you needed. And I think that that was a good, a very good experience for me because um, one, it allowed me to, to I, I, at that time I wasn't very uh, mature as a person. Okay. It allowed me to mature really, really well. Um, yeah. And, and and it was there that I really developed the love for teaching because, you know, um, as you know, when you're in, in, um, in college or university, at a certain level, especially if you're upholding a certain GPA, the lecturers then come to you and ask you, are you willing, would you be willing to do some tutoring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And so yeah. that's how I really got started. Mm -hmm. um, found that there were people who were constantly coming to me for, you know, for help. Could you explain yeah. this to me? I don't understand this. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, that, as I did it more and more, I realized, hey, this is something that I could definitely do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had people who used to come to my home and, you know, you know, seek me out more or less for me for to explain the, things, concepts to them. Concepts that, that they probably they did not get when the lecturer did it. And yeah, it, that's good. that in itself, you know, gave me this impetus that, hey, Maybe I could, you know, you know, do um, get involved in a career in education. Um, yeah. Bishop Michael Eldon, uh, um, I was working at the Sugar Corporation back home mm -hmm. um, as a chemist, and it, it was a very good job. Um, but of course, in terms of the finances, it, it didn't really allow me to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so Bishop Michael Eldon, um, that opportunity came up through a, a friend, a, a friend, a, a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. She introduced me, and um, it was a home run since <laughs> since I've been, you know, I've, I've come. I've not, I've not taught at any other school since yeah. I've come to Bahamas, you know. So yeah. I've been here going on 17, 17 years now. Wow, this is good, Mr. One. I'm glad you taught me. I've benefited in a lot of ways. <laughs> yes. A lot of ways from you teaching me. And I would say the same thing, you know, even in university, I tutored as well. You know, mm. when I first started tutoring, I first started tutoring at Taylor University, where I tutored mm. general chemistry and organic chemistry. And yes. of course, I was paid, but I loved tutoring so much that even in graduate school, I tutored for free. Wow. I tutored some students yes. for free. Even with my busy schedule, I tutored exactly. some students for free. And, and, and that's and when you know that it's a yeah. part of you. Yeah. That yeah. you, you don't necessarily look for the remuneration. Yeah. But, you know, you, you recognize that this is something that, you know, um, somebody needs and you have. You know, mm -hmm. I always remember the scripture says, freely have you received. In really a lot of guess. cases, you've received a lot. You know, some cases we have to pay for it, of course. Mm -hmm. But I, I think of it like this. There are some people who have poured into me mm -hmm. that make me who I am. And so, yep. I, it's, it's just... The it's just that kind of reciprocal nature. nature yeah, I agree. You know, getting back into it and giving it pouring into somebody else's, you know. Yeah, life. it's better to give than to receive. Definitely, man. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> so what have been your most, actually, how do you maintain a balanced life given all your responsibilities and accomplishments? So how do you maintain balance, Mr. Bond? You know you're busy, you're teaching a yeah, lot of man. students, also have a personal life. I how tell you. I how do you <laughs> balance? I tell you, well, the thing about it is that the students sometimes they how they be how they behave is they, sometimes they think that all that you do is teach. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. They think that when they go home in the evening, you was you are, you you take a bath right from school and you, <laughs> <laughs> you sleep there in the night and you're ready to go again early. Oh man, well, that's <laughs> funny. Eat breakfast you know, at the school. You live yes, at the school. Have breakfast and everything, but you know, but but um, I do have a a a a, a, a life outside of school mm -hmm. and you know, I work really hard at trying to maintain that balance because I believe that balance is, a, is the key for you get, you know getting ahead in any area you must be balanced I you agree. must learn to walk that fine line of balance so for me um, I'm involved in church mm -hmm. I have responsibilities of church and so that is one of the you know one area that you know I, I when I sometimes I feel like I'm overwhelmed with work at school Mm -hmm. There's an outlet there. I agree. You know, yeah, I I also love fishing. Okay. So, <laughs> I, okay. I haven't gotten a chance to do a lot of that lately. 
yeah, that's fair, that's fair. rods and stuff and so whenever mm-hmm. you know it's 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 getting tough and it's getting too much for me mm-hmm. i find myself somewhere on a beach you know or, or in a canal and i'm fishing and for me it's therapeutic i agree yeah. yes I, I i i'm able to you know relax my mind get fresh perspective mm-hmm. uh, you know be able to be rejuvenated mm-hmm. uh, so you know those are some of the things that um I do um, also. I when at high school I was an avid sportsman. Okay. But of course, I can't play that those sports now. Oh okay, yeah, that's a lot of them. I watch a lot of them. I love, ba- I love watching basketball, cricket, um, soccer. Then the soccer World Cup was just the other day, so mm-hmm. watch that. Um, you know, I watch a lot of those games. Um, so okay. I even watch golf. My wife doesn't understand it, but <laughs> okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. So yeah, you have outlets. Yes, they are. Yeah. You must have outlets. You I must. agree. I you agree. Must. Yeah, for me, it's my. It's me also watching tennis as well mm. as playing some tennis. Yes, I out. know that you played, right? You, you, yeah, I played tennis yeah. a lot in high school. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely having balance. Like one of my mm. former guests, one of my colleagues from Georgia Tech, um, mm. Mr. Sharafali, he told me that he approaches this from the perspective of balance in different compartments. If you view life in compartments, whether it be social, faith. Mm work having balance without throughout those compartments yes, so that you're not if you skewed to one area you can mm-hmm. kind of adjust and because it's a constant adjusting it's a constant adapting yes, yes. it's a not push just, and pull here yes yeah. always mm-hmm. yeah Definitely. yes i agree with that whole lot of yeah so what would you say as compliments your success as a teacher would you say it's the mentors you've had the study that you do the prep that you do your lesson plans how you approach teaching the student, your teaching philosophy. What would you yeah. compliment to you being successful as a teacher? All right. <laughs> um, for me, one of the most important things that you could do is create a rapport with your students. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So creating rapport. So for me, I, I, I always I want to create an environment that is oftentimes relaxed, but it's respectful. Okay. Where students, you know, this this teaching learning environment. It is something that is a dynamic, you know, um, mm-hmm. a joke and we laugh. I always tell a student come, came back to me the other day after many years of grad, a couple of years of graduating and said, Mr. Bond, how come you're still here? I said, I've always found a way to laugh. Wow. I've always found a way to laugh because, you know, it's it's sometimes work can be tough. Yeah, sometimes I agree. The, 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 you know, everything that you have to do can wear down on you. But for me, I always look for an opportunity that I could find, a, you know, something to laugh at, something to make a little joke about, yeah. you know. Um, and, and so that's one of the things I, I want the students to understand that, that the environment that we create in class must be one where they're not afraid to, to, to you know, to make mistakes. Yeah, I agree. They're not afraid to to express themselves. Yeah. You know, you go into some classes and they don't want it, you know, it's like a censorship. That the teacher doesn't want the student to say anything. I'd be the first to tell my students I don't know everything. Yeah. Especially in this digital age, I don't. Same know here. It. Same here. Understand? And sometimes yeah. somebody could bring something to the table that I've never even considered, never even looked at, yeah. never even you know you know had the ability or the the, 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 the opportunity to, to 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 look at. And mm-hmm. so I embrace those things. You know, yeah. I want them to think critically. Yeah. You know, so those are the things. I think the other thing is I, I, I listen. Okay. I, I show empathy. Okay. I think those are the things that that help me to become successful as a teacher because people who are, I haven't, I don't even teach, mm. find their way into my classroom. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Find their way. Um, and so that those are the kind. I think sometimes we look for the for the uh, grandiose. The and the you know the the the, the 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 traditional, but I think teaching is there's a human aspect that you I can agree. never overlook. I agree. You understand when the students are able. I always remember somebody telling me he says, if the students trust you and like you, they're able to learn from you a whole lot better. Mm-hmm. You yeah. understand. And I so, agree. That's one of the those you know. That's always been my watchword. You know, create that environment where students feel safe. Students feel like they could come and they could say, "Mr. Bourne, this is what is happening. This is what is going on at home. Um, this is why I can't give you your homework. Uh, this is uh, you know. Of course, they're the ones who will try to use that uh, <laughs> to get a, to get a, you know get around you. 
but mm -hmm. they're often genuine cases with children who are struggling with some difficult, difficult situations. And I agree. You have to be able to understand, uh, you know, what, uh, somewhat what they're dealing with and be mm -hmm. able to help them through those, you know, to navigate those areas in their lives. And, and, yeah. and that's, where, that's where teaching becomes more than just the curriculum. It becomes teaching, um, you know, them for life and giving them the life skills that they could use to, to I agree. navigate, you know. So I think that those are the things that I mentioned. Those are the things that I found most impactful for me mm -hmm. as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, I create. Yes, I teach. Yes, you know, um, you know, people come and they're like, yeah, Mr. Bourne is a good teacher, whatever. But for me, all of those things, those compliments stem from the fact of the kind of person that I am and how I'm able to help them get over these hurdles. I and agree. Help them to, you know, you know, blossom. I agree. Sense, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's good, Mr. Bowen. So I have a quick question. I have a quick <laughs> question. Um, how do you go about teaching students of different abilities? Because you, you teach a classroom with students who have differing abilities. Yes. How do you go about it? Is it like you tailor your instruction to them? Or do you mm -hmm. how you assess them, or is it a complement of all of those things? Man, sometimes you, you as a, as a teacher, you have to come up with the whole gamut. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Meaning that there are times when you are able to pull them aside. You know, the other class, the other members of the class can move forward, or they are doing something, or you, 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 you when you develop your lessons, you have some component. This person might be not so good at, at chemistry but they're good at acting or they're good at whatever. And so you always try to see if there's some way you could bring in that kind of, you know, that kind of um, spark to your lesson that they okay. get an opportunity to act, pulling students out and, and sometimes just get into the bottom of where they're struggling. Yeah, I agree. So, really so, go you know, through. Yes. And sometimes you'd realize that you pull them out and sometimes the thing that they were struggling to have, to, to understand in a classroom setting, be able to understand it in 10 15 minutes because what they're now in your they're only it's only you and them mm -hmm. not afraid of, of 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 sounding oh hey this that i said might sound stupid or this that i say might 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 embarrass me so they're able to kind of open up themselves yeah and, you know from there you you're able to deal with the situation a whole lot more but um of course no you know when you when you look at um you know, data, uh, teaching um, styles and all of that, you recognize that they, you cannot just bring one thing mm -hmm. all the time. You gotta give students an, ability, uh, an opportunity to to express themselves in various ways. And so mm -hmm. what, whatever, whatever it is, you know, um, sometimes it's, uh, you know, you, you find that somebody's failing your test, but you give them a brochure to, to, to create and they are excellent at that. Yeah. Or, you know, the digital skills are off the chains, you yeah. know, um, and, and so you, 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 you try to use those things now to help to motivate them yeah. and, you know, help them to see that, hey, I could do it. I might yeah. just do it in a different form, uh -huh. but I could definitely do it. Yeah, so as you teach, you reach a person where they are with their gifting, with exactly. their skill, and make yes. sure that the concept is learned. That's good, yes. Mr. Vaughn. That's very good. So how have you maintained vision and teamwork in your classroom, in your environment? How do you maintain yeah. vision and teamwork? Your yeah, man. Well, one of the things that is, 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 is uh, of prime importance is the input of your students and, and, the col and, your col and, and my colleagues. Okay. So I always, I'm always open to what somebody has to say. Sometimes, you know, we could be these egotistical individuals that, you mm -hmm. know, think that I, am, I, I could do this all by myself. I've been doing it, you know. I was I my only child for my mother, you know, and so I for a, for a lot of my life I lived al alone, mm -hmm. and so sometimes you know I have to shake myself out of that. That hey, I'm not an island. I agree. Myself. I have yeah. to you know I embrace you know what somebody else is saying, and so I I'm happy for you know um, teaching partners. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we share resources, we share ideas, we share strategies. The uh -huh. ones that work and the ones that don't work. <laughs> I know? agree. I agree. <laughs> um, we bounce ideas off of each other. Um, you know, um, and it's the, the other thing that I do is I do my own. I I, I do self evaluations. Okay. How? Yeah. How am I? You know, did I really do the best that I could in this area? 
did I really teach this like I could? Or is this the best that I could have done? Uh -huh. uh, you know, collaborations. Don't be mm -hmm. afraid to pull people in. And, 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 with, and, and with me saying that, <laughs> I haven't forgotten you, sir. So <laughs> I know that we are, you know, we are, we are at a busy point of, of school, but I will definitely you reach know, out take, to me. Take you, take you up on your offer to come in and to and to and to share with my students because definitely the, what you have is you have a wealth of knowledge to offer. Thank you, thank you. And um, you know, I want the students to be uh, exposed to, you know, some of the thoughts and the the things that go on in your mind and how you present <laughs> things and set things up. So yeah, man, you're yeah. very kind. Thank you, Mr. Boy. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, so man. so I have two questions, two scenarios before we start to wrap up. Two scenarios. Yes. Um. How do you deal with the lack of resources? Because we we're on the ground, we're on Grand Bahama Island. Mm -hmm. How do you deal at, on one of the best schools in the island? So how do you deal with the lack of resources when you encounter that? In, oh, even in, what do you do? Uh, how do you approach uh, it? That is one of the most difficult things that I have had to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, just things that are sometimes that you think that every science lab should have and it doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I'm always. It always pains me whenever you know students come and ask me. Um, you know, you explore a concept, and they said, "Hey, could we look at that, or could we do that?" And you said, "You know what? Unfortunately, we don't have that." That's one of the most. That's one of the most difficult things for me to say to my students. And so okay. sometimes what we have to do is we have to get creative. I came from Guyana, mm -hmm. <laughs> and in Guyana we are we are resourceful people. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we have to come up with, with different, um, it might not be the same experiment, but it is a similar experiment that the mm -hmm. concept is still there. They're still able to, uh, you know, deal with that. Or um, it might be something that can, we don't have a particular chemical, but we could use something, a household chemical, mm -hmm. something that you could use, you know. So those are some of the things that, uh, you know, you really have to, you know, and, and you have to stay on top of your game to know what is available and what is not, mm -hmm. what, you could, what you could bring to the classroom. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, we've had to put our hands in our own pockets and, and, uh -huh. and get things. Um, sometimes we've had to approach parents, um, you know, to, to, to help us out with, with some of the materials. But yeah. those are some of the things that, um, you know, um, I, I remember at one time, um, Farmer Cam, one of the other um, local organizations, they were just compiling a list um, of things that they wanted to, you know, get to our into our labs. Um, unfortunately, I think that we had um, Dorian and COVID and all of that, and that kind of petered out. But you, you know, the 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 from the you know from the, and yes, from, from getting getting people from the outside the business community to help. Public private partnership. Yes, yes. You could yeah. you could also so those are some of the things that I do, you know, get the parents involved where necessary because once a parent knows that this is something that's gonna enhance the, the education of their child and they could afford it, mm -hmm. they will do it. They will get they will get on board. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's something that I could make mm. or I could facilitate, mm. I do it. Um yeah, you know, I agree. So those are some of the areas that I we get around that and, and 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 i can't leave this one out um ub ub mm -hmm. has tremendous help yeah because they've offered you know i you know after talking to um the relative faculty know, yeah the relative faculty members and so on those people that use my room they've always given me the go ahead you know use whatever you need mm -hmm. uh, you know and so we've been able to um utilize some of the things that they've had to help enhance what we want to present to our students and so yeah that is, that is something that is you know definitely have been has been a plus for for us there but um we still have yeah. a bit chronic shortage Good evening, students. It is so good to have you in this supplemental review session for the exam. As noted in the syllabus, there will be three exams this semester and a final exam. Um, the lowest exam score will be dropped before calculating the total exam score for a total of 600 points. Any time constraint or conflict that is university approved can serve as a basis for rescheduling an exam. 
Any missed exam is an absence, if not excused, will result in an automatic zero for the exam. However, this score can serve as the drop score. So this is what I'm referring to when I say you can drop your lowest grade. Um, the exam will be released on Friday, September 16th, 2022, instead of Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. You have 24 hours to take it. The deadline is final. No exceptions will be made except for reasons approved by the university. The link to respond to the test assignment will close after 24 hours and the Moodle link will close after 24 hours to upload the hard copy. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, hopefully you're able to uh, get all of the tasks done. Now to prepare for this exam. Um, wishing you all the best. So let's begin the review. We will review for exam one. Let me change the view. Full screen. There we go. So this is I uh, a uh, this is a version of the review. We will review for exam one on Wednesday. Homework three will be due on Sunday. So these are some quick facts you want to just go through. Um, so as I said earlier, homework three, which will be uh, given on Saturday, September tenth. Will be given Saturday, September 10th, and will be due on Sunday. But let's just review some quick facts. One, solids have a definite shape and are not appreciably compressible. So you want to know these facts. These are going to be important for you to know. It's important for you to review the videos on YouTube, as well as the notes from the class, the PowerPoint, and the handouts, the packets. Especially this review video. Sodium, Na, is a chemical symbol for elemental sodium. 3. If matter is uniform throughout, it cannot be, se uh, cannot be separated into other substances by physical processes, but can be decomposed into other substances by chemical processes. It is called a compound. 4. Symbol for the element, potassium is K. Also remember, there will be a quiz given on Monday and on Wednesday. 5. The symbol for the element magnesium is Mg. 6. The initial or tentative explanation for some scientific phenomenon or occurrence is called an hypothesis. 7. A concise verbal statement or mathematical equation that summarizes a broad variety of observations and experiences is called a law. 8. A separation process that depends on differing abilities of substances to form gases is called distillation. Let's proceed. The SI unit for mass is kilogram. 10, uh, my apologies if this is not that clear. 10 or 1 degree of temperature. The 1 degree of temperature that's smallest on on the front is the finite temperature scale. Um, I actually should read a one degree of temperature is smallest on the finite temperature scale. 11, a common English set of units for expressing velocity is miles per hour. The SI unit for velocity is meter per second. Momentum is defined as a product of mass and velocity. The SI unit for momentum is kilogram meter per second. Also some review tips. Review homeworks one and two. Review the quizzes that I will give you and review the lecture videos and problem solving sessions and you should be fine and set the exam. Remember the exam is 50 questions, 55 questions, 50 multiple choice and 5 short answer. Um, number 14, the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. Number 15, the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius is 298 in Kelvins. 16, the freezing point of water at 180 m pressure is 0 degrees. 17. The temperature of 400K is the same as 261 degrees Fahrenheit. 18. The temperature of 290K is the same as 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, the number 1.00430 has six significant figures. Additionally, in the following list, only light is an example of light is not in the following list. Only light is not an example of matter. Um, 54, the law of composition applies to compounds. 
and it says that the composition of a compound is always the same. Moving forward, the quantum mechanical model of the atom is important because it explains how electrons exist in atoms and how those electrons determine the chemical and physical properties of elements. Light is a transverse wave and is the form of re- EM radiation, electromagnetic radiation. Light travels at 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. 7.3, the wavelength of the wave is the distance in space between adjacent crests and is measured in units of distance. E equals H C over lambda, where E equals H nu and nu is C over lambda. 7.5a, the frequency of the light is related to the color, nu, or v, however you want to say it, is nu, is directly proportional to the energy of the disturbance, and which is related to the color of the light. Um, for one of your homework assignments, there was a question that said to explain each wavelength. You want to know the answers to that very well. For a gamma, Raise the frequency, the wavelength, and also you want to know it for X rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, infrared rays, microwaves, and radio waves. 7.3 The wavelength of the wave is the distance in space between adjacent crests and is measured in units of distance, as I said earlier. The amplitude of the wave is the vertical height of a crest. The more closely spaced the waves, the shorter the wavelength, the more energy there is, the amplitude, the more energy there is. The amplitude of the electric and magnetic fields in light determine the intensity or brightness of the light. The higher the amplitude is, the more energy the wave has. So I just want to give you a quick guide. There will be five types of short answer questions, short answer calculations that I will release to you or give you on the exam one type of short answer question so you have 50 multiple choice and they'll primarily be facts and a few calculations the calculation questions for the short answer will be in five categories one problem will be on em radiation and a bit dimensional analysis problem the other problem will be on the wave nature of matter using the Broglie's equation the other question will be on atomic spectroscopy the other question will be on quantum numbers, and then you will have to know how to draw a Young's double split diagram. Um, so, for example, if you were given a problem where you were given the distance to the sun as 1.496 times 10 to the 8 kilometers, and you're required to find the time for light to travel from the sun to the earth, you'll think through and you'll come up with a conceptual plan. The conceptual plan will be you can write the distance in kilometers, distance in meters to time. And then the solution would be uh, the distance converted to meters, then multiplied by the reciprocal of the speed of light to give you the time. That will be 499 seconds. So the wave nature of my sample problem will involve, say you were given a mass of 9.109 times 10 to 31 kilograms. Lambda is 0.2 nanometers. Find the frequency conceptual plan would be you take the mass and the wavelength convert to frequency using u is equal to Planck's constant h over mass times wavelength solution is going to be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 kilograms meters squared per second squared over 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms times 0.2 nanometers times 1 meter over 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers that is going to give you 3.6 and 10 to the 6 meters per second the units are correct the magnitude is large that is what would be expected from the particle being calculated here the particle speed being calculated here and the particle is the electron okay my apologies for if some of these pictures are blurry so note on the exam you will be given a spectrum so this is an example of the atomic spectroscopy problem for the problem you'll be required to solve the energy and you'll be required to know uh find the lambda the wavelength and 
you'll also be required to determine which region of the spectrum it is in. So say for example you were given a problem that said you start in the second quantized state or second orbital and you get a reaction relaxed to the first orbital. And how you would calculate that you would use Rigberg's equation in which you input the final and initial quantized state, then you get the energy values, and then you use the energy values. Using E equals AT over lambda, you transpose it so that lambda is the subject, and then you get the wavelength, and you find that that's typically in the UV or ultraviolet range. So for quantum numbers, you want to know your principal quantum number N. You want to know your angular quantum number L. You want to know the magnetic quantum number M sub L. And you want to know the spin quantum number M sub S. You want to know the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. You want to know Pauli's exclusion principle. You want to know a part of duality ideas. And you want to know the photoelectric effect. Note, writing electron configurations will be assessed in exam 2, not exam 1. Also, you want to know how to draw Young's double split experiment. That's kind of the review. Uh, we'll discuss more review. We'll do more review on Wednesday. On uh, Monday will be regular lecture. Note, you'll have two quizzes. You'll have a quiz on Monday and a quiz on Wednesday. All of this is just preparation for the exam so that you are well versed in the calculations and you have a good understanding as to how to proceed with the exam. The quiz will be released on Monday morning and Quiz, uh, quiz 2 will be released Monday morning. Quiz 3 will be released Wednesday morning. I hope you're doing well. And hope you do well on the exam.